Hello everyone, welcome to day 6 of March Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is, count all valid pickup and delivery options. This solution would be day 585th of the Lead Code daily challenges that we have been solving from past one and a half years and I genuinely hope you also learn something new today as well. In this question, we are given n orders. What we need to identify, we need to identify the count of all pickup delivery possible sequences such that delivery always happens after the pickup or pickup happens before the delivery, either way out. Here we have provided us with few examples. I'll be walking you through these examples as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly hop onto it. Count all valid pickup and delivery options, lead code 1359. It's a hard level question on lead code. However, for those who have been following along from past one and a half years will agree with me that we can rate this question under medium category. So let's get started. Here the value of n that is given to us is 1. And what are two possible options that we can have? Either we go for pickup followed by delivery or we go for delivery followed by after and then pickup. Since this is not a valid sequence as per the question because here delivery is happen happening before the pickup and it really doesn't make sense. Therefore, there's only one possibility possible which is this one. As a result of which we give the answer as 1. Let's proceed ahead. Now let's take the case where n we have 2. So there are two orders. Either you go for picking up the first order, followed by picking up the second order, then delivering the first order, then delivering the second order. Here I have showcased the six possibilities. You P1, P2, D1, D2, P1, P2, D2, D1, P1, D1, P2, D2, P2, P1, D1, D2, P2, P1, D2, D1, P2, D2, P1, D2, D1. And you will see that in all, all six possibilities, the pickup is happening before the delivery for both the items P1 and D1. However, there is different arrangements in between them. In case you will go for this particular sequence where you are picking up P1 item followed by delivering the second item, then picking up second item, then delivering the first item. This is an invalid sequence. Why? Because of this constraint. Because delivery of the second item is happening first followed by picking it up, which is not possible. Remember these six possibilities and we will be exploiting these properties to actually build our algo. Let's cut short to the core algorithm. Let's increase the value of n from 2 to 3. And now we have six possible options P1, P2, D1, D2 and the two are getting added is P3 and D3. Let's assume for a second that we know that for value of n there are six possibilities that could exist as my answer and here uh, these po six possibilities will be distributed across P1, P2, D1 and D2. As a result of which I have marked it as unanimous. I am not sure what will be here but what I know is there will be in total six possibilities. Now I want to fit in P3 and D3 in between these six possibilities. So let me just change the color of pen and highlight where all can I place P3 and D3. So let's shoot for it. Whatever you are seeing in green comes as the possible options where P3 and D3 can be placed. So what we are going to do, let's go one by one and let's fill in P3 followed by D3 because in the question it is specified that P3 should come first followed by D3. So let's place P3 here. So P3, as soon as P3 gets placed here, what all possibilities does exist for D3? So let's write those up. We'll have a, a space created over here because that's obvious. You can place something next to P3 as well. Here, let's write PX DX where X signifies the range starting from 1 to 2. Again here, we'll have PX DX. Then followed by PX DX again. Then followed by PX DX again. And let's count the number of spaces that have been created for D3 to be placed. So the first one is this, second one is this, third one is this, fourth one is this, fifth one is this. As a result of which, if we go by this particular permutation, we will see that there are five such possibilities. And I'll reiterate, the possible value of X here could be one or two because of the previous solution that we have already built. Let's shoot for the next possibility. Let's go back to this particular position 
and let's assume I am placing P3 here. So when I am placing P3 here, I can only place D3 over these many locations. Obviously, because if we, I place D3 at the previous locations, it would be the violation to our constraint. So let's write all such possibilities. I'm not utilizing this position, so let's skip it. So I'll start from here, PX DX, followed by, I'll have P3 placed here. Then a new space has been created, obviously, because it can be, D3 can be placed immediate to P3, followed by PX DX, followed by space PX DX, followed by space, px dx and in the last we also have another space now let's count how many possibilities does exist corresponding to this particular location so one is this second one is this third one is this fourth one is this as a result of which we got four possible options where d3 can be placed let's proceed ahead let's me just change the color of pen and now let's shoot for placing p3 over here so we have placed px dx here then this space is also vacant, uh, is also is not utilized, so let's skip it. Then again, we'll have another PX DX here. Now we have placed P3 and a new space gets created next to P3 because obviously you can place something immediately next to P3. Next we have PX DX followed by a space PX DX followed by another space. So let's count what all possibilities does exist for D3 to be placed and let me just change the pen and the first one is this, second one is it, third one is this. Corresponding to this possibility, we have three options available to us and let's shoot for the next one and let me just change the color of pen and this time we are going to place P3 over here. So we'll have PX DX here followed by another PX DX. It could be any possibility of P1, P2 from the previous solution that we have already built. Then again, PX DX. Then I have P3. So a new space is also present next to P3 because it can be D3 can be placed here. Then we have PX DX followed by a space. So what all possibilities does exist with respect to this particular permutation? Two possibilities exist. So let's write two here. And the last one is the easiest one. We simply showcases that we'll have PX DX placed four times. Oh, this doesn't is not visible. Let me just take black. We'll have four combinations of PX DX. We are not using any of these spaces. No, 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 no. And what we are simply doing, we are placing P3 over here, followed by a new space that has been created as a result of which there's only one possibility where D3 can be placed. So let me just write it for better understanding so that we are consistent. So we have four PX DXs. And the last one is P3 followed by a space. As a result of which, the total possibility corresponding to this particular permutation comes out to be one. Now, we have analyzed all the possible permutations using the previous solution that we have built. So here the possibilities for n equals to two over six. Here, what will be the total number of possibilities? Let's sum these up. Five plus four plus three plus two plus one. What do you get? You get 15. So the total number of possibilities with respect to n equals to three turns out to be 15 into the solution that you have already built in the past for n equals to two. And 15 into 6 gives me 90 and 90 becomes the answer. The problem reduces to identifying that particular odd number from the given value of n using which we can find out this particular value. So let's reiterate for this particular question. Here the value of n was 3. We are interested in finding out that particular odd value using which we can identify 15. So from 3, how can you derive 5? It's simple, 2 into 3 minus 1. So 2 into 3 minus 1 gives you 5. Now you have derived 5. Now you can use the formula 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 maps to 
let's consider let's call this number odd number o n into o n plus 1 by 2 this is a simple mathematical formula that we are already aware of sum of all numbers starting from 1 up till n and we have used this formula to actually find out the new variable parameter which will be multiplied with the previously computed value for n minus 1 location so again I'm reiterating the problem reduces to identifying this odd number appropriately which can be derived from 2 into i minus 1 and then you can use this mathematical formula to actually build your answer. If you have any doubts don't worry everything will be crystal clear in the coding section. So let's quickly hop onto it. Here I've created a DPRA and in the question it was specified that the value of n will lie up till 500 as a result of which I have taken the array of size uh, 501 and I should have written this here instead of there I have created a mod variable because in the question it also specified to take the mod of 10 raised to 9 plus 1 I go ahead and write the default values the answer that we have computed for the first location and the second location and starting i equals to 3 I go and build the solution up till i equals to n I go and identify that odd number using the formula 2 into i minus 1. I count the permutations. How do I do that? It's again very simple. Odd number into odd number plus 1 by 2. And I simply multiply this value with the previously computed value at i minus 1 index. In the end, I simply typecast into int and return the solution. So let's try this up. Accepted 54 times faster, which is pretty good again. Time complexity of this approach is order of n and space complexity is again of order of n. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and are interested in more solutions of the dynamic playlist, I'm attaching the link in the description below. Do give it a shot. It's worth trying and signing off. My name is Anshu Dadeja, SD4 at Adobe, your friend, your catalyst, your mentor in this coding journey. Take care. Goodbye.